Right, yeah. Um, thanks for coming to my talk. Very excited to be here. Uh, I hope you can bear with me in my um, difficult name. I also have a very difficult accent, maybe three of them. So <laughs> <laughs> I hope you can stay on track. Uh, this is all going to be about how Australia's threatened species going. Uh, in fact, how Australia's threatened birds going. And if we had a tool that reported on how threatened birds uh, are going, how could we use that tool to say something about what's happening in NRM regions. Uh, so it's another Threatened Species Recovery Hub project um, that was just introduced by Martin, thanks. Um, so I don't have to tell you that there are lots of threatened species in Australia, more than 1,800 at the moment uh, listed uh, under the EPBC Act. So this is nothing new. In 2015, um, the number of uh, threatened species have actually given the incentive to create the first threatened species strategy and also the threatened species recovery hub. And one of these five-year uh, targets of the threatened species strategy is actually to uh, improve the population trajectories of 20 threatened birds, 20 threatened mammals, and 30 threatened plants. Now, Lots of efforts and lots of money is actually invested in conserving threatened species um, and also some little amount in monitoring. Um, yet there is no consistent framework to really get all this data together, pull it in a database and make it available to the public. So nothing, there is no framework that really reports on the trends in biodiversity. So how are Australia's threatened species going? Anyone an idea? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, no one really knows, um, but we are trying to tackle this question and we are getting inspiration to answer this question from the economy and how the economy uses, for example, stock market indices or national indicators like the gross domestic product. Uh, the upper one is the Dow Jones, by the way. Uh, how they report on what's going on with the economy or with the country's uh, production. So this is where we got inspired to develop um, with many stakeholders, a threatened species index for Australia as a national headline indicator. <laughs> it's not an easy task, I can tell you. And um, it's not an easy task, especially for Australia. Why? Well, because Australia is a highly diverse country. While in Europe we have lots of people collecting lots of data and you don't have much country, well, in Australia, there are not that many people and the environment is quite highly diverse and um, probably not everyone wants to spend their weekends in the bush. Uh, so it's quite a bit of a challenge. And the only way how you actually can do something like that is by creating a highly collaborative network of many, many, many research partners and many friends. Um, so this project, the Threatened Species Index project, has um, at the moment about 43 research partners. Uh, I see some of uh, them here in the audience. Uh, we've um, covered basically all states and territories in Australia. We're collaborating with uh, several major NGOs like BirdLife Australia and Australian Wildlife Conservancy. We have several research institutions. Um, I probably also should mention that um, this is uh, Hugh, Hugh Possingham's baby. Uh, he's uh, leading this project still. Um, and uh, it's co-led by Aisha Tulok from the University of um, Sydney. Uh, so a highly collaborative project and together we're developing a threatened species index for Australia. Now we're using an approach um, called the Living Planet Index. The Living Planet Index is um, an initiative that started in the late 90s uh, to um, get data together to bring it into a database and to report towards international targets like the CBD. Um, and uh, what those guys from the Living Planet Index do is they basically extract data from published literature, they calculate um, a geometric mean um, to create a multi-species trend, and then they benchmarked um, one year, 1970 in this case, where the index value is set to one, and all the subsequent index values are basi basically relative to this initial year. So it's a relative change through time. Um, however, the Living Planet Index database uh, did not have much information in Australia. So what's happening here? Um, well, it turns out not much of the data is actually uh, being published. In fact, we only found about um, 24 threatened mammals and seven threatened birds in their database. So we had to go and actually 
uh, chase the data to its original source, the data custodians. Now, together with BirdLife Australia, we've been now over the last two years collecting data on threatened birds, threatened and near threatened birds. Um, we've contacted 130 single data custodians. You may have been contacted by us as well. If you have provided data, many thanks. Um, and we've observed that actually um, not all data are created equal. So there were sort of really good suitable data sets uh, that have been collected to inform population trends. And there were data sets on highly structured and standardized uh, monitoring designs. Uh, very good designers, for example, in Kangaroo Island, the glossy black cockatoo, maybe some of you know about it. Um, and then we had uh, data sets from more or less standardized sampling to completely unstructured, non-standardized stuff, and um, then just a handful of sightings, um, like for example on uh, the popular night parrot, for which probably an index wouldn't be possible. There's just not enough data out there yet. So, and this is the reason why now we've, um, that we've uh, collected um, data over the last two years, we basically had to reject more than 90% of all data collected. Uh, we basically excluded um, time series with zero only values, and we retained data uh, time series that had at least five years of monitoring, and also data sets that had a low standardization of uh, method and um, consistency of monitoring at sites. So we ended up with um, about 43 data sources, uh, more than 11,000 time series to calculate um, yeah, 72 taxa. And uh, we wrote a interim report for the Australian government that we submitted about two months ago to show, to provide a proof of concept. Yes, a threatened species uh, for Australia is actually possible and we should continue on and develop one for, for plants, mammals and freshwater species and then everything else that has data. So uh, this work is still ongoing. At the moment, we are carrying out a comprehensive sensitivity analysis to prove the robustness of this index. So the results that I'll show you are quite preliminary. Um, results? <laughs> Who wants results? <laughs> OK, that's the result. No, I'm joking. Um, OK, that's, <laughs> that's uh, the upper panel on the left is um, the multi-species index in white uh, based on 72 taxa. Uh, bird taxa in Australia. The um, blue um, cloud uh, indicates the variability within the single species strands that form the multi-species composite. And the map up there shows you where this data um, came from. Um, light blue indicates uh, low sampling intensity, like little data collected, and pink, the pinker it gets, the more data was collected. And then we have a couple of uh, diagnostics, just um, summarizing the data that we have in our database. So on the left-hand side are the number of time series through time, uh, while each time series is basically a site where people went and collected monitoring uh, data. And then on the right um, lower panel, we have the number of uh, time series through time in blue and in green, the number of species. Um, and uh, we're providing these indices with diagnostics so that people can actually assess how robust they are and how representative they are for um, the bird group of interest. And of course, you can go and drill down this index to, for example, show an index for an Australian state and territory. This is the Australian, uh, South Australian uh, bird index. Um, how you can interpret this is basically well, if we benchmark the index at 1980 and set that's the year where the index is set to one, well, in, 19, in 2015, there is a decrease of, what is it, 60%, it's at 0 0.4, yeah. So that's, that's what, what, what the index is basically showing, and this has happened over the years between 1980 and 2015. Of course, the end user in the future will be able to choose where to benchmark the index themselves. Um, now, since this is an NRM conference, I probably should say something about um, indices and NRM regions. Um, I've read there 56, and... Um, so we've been asked, yeah, can you not provide like an index for NRM regions? Um, and the answer is maybe. It depends on the data that we have for the NRM regions. So I went and 
looked at where the data comes from, from the different uh, NRM regions, and you can see that there are a couple of regions that are quite well represented, mainly on the eastern side of Australia, uh, and there are a few NRM regions that are not having much data. So what I did was basically I looked, okay, so where do we, where do we draw a threshold? Um, I look for NRM regions that contained data uh, with at least 10 taxa and um, one taxon from each of the major groups like shoreline birds and terrestrial birds and wetland birds and I observed that there were about 27 NRM regions that um, matched this criteria. Uh, I'm happy to tell that uh, the state, well, the NRM region where I live, southeastern Queensland, is actually the one with the largest volume of data, thanks to the study weighter group, or weighter study group, I always tell it wrong. Um, let me show you. So that's the southeastern, uh, southeast Queensland index for this NRM region, based on 17 taxa. Uh, I'm a little bit concerned about this first data between 1980 and 1990 because there are not many time series during this time, so this might actually, this increase might be an artifact. Um, this is where, close to here, is it where we are? South Australian Murray Darling Basin? Um, but yeah, it shows, depending on the data that we have for this NRM region, um, 19 taxa, it shows a decrease, quite a steep one. Um, so in the future, of course, we want to uh, provide a legacy of the Threatened Species Recovery Hub. We want to make this index happen every, every year. We want it to be a national indicator. And this is the reason why at the <coughs> moment we are creating a web tool where a public <coughs> user uh, from the government, academia, NGO, whoever, goes there and um, drills the index down to the uh, birds of interest, um, calculates an index, uh, looks at the diagnostics for this index and then downloads the data or even uploads more data into it. So we're still uh, seeking funding for this web tool to happen. So this could be your logo. If you know anyone who has money or if you have money, <laughs> let me know. Uh, and other than that, well, uh, in the meanwhile, before this index is, um, web tool is created, I'm happy to sit with you and calculate a couple of threatened species indices for your NR NRM region. So just uh, message me. I, the only thing I need is this uh, and your time and some wine and cheese. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just uh, let me know and we can have a look at the indices for your NRM region. Uh, that's it. And if you want to become a friend of the index, friends of the index are supporters, concerned citizens or people who just uh, care about threatened species, send me an email, happy to add you to the list, and uh, you'll receive updates on this project. Thank you very much. <laughs>